know, since the man is on, um, okay, this man, mm-hmm. This thing, though. Uh-huh. I just said the man can't sing, though. You ain't singing. We don't even sing it. We don't do my home to a spell. Yeah. Mm. Good morning, Seth Manning. Good morning, Seth Nancy. Good morning. Feel like my nose won't run this morning.
inviting your Holy Spirit, God, your anointing God in the house this morning, God, and have your way, God, in this house in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, we want to thank you, God, that we know we're in the presence of the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know we're in the presence of the same God that brought up the sun, God, that's shining out there, Father, right now. And we just want to thank you, God, for that. And then, Father God, we want to thank you this morning, Lord, for our life, our health, and our strength. Last night's sleep, as we lay slumbered and slept in the state of death, how you placed an angel by our bedside to keep an eye on this heartbeat of ours. We just want to thank you, God, and praise your holy name, God, and glorify you right now. And then, God, I'm asking you this morning, Lord, bless sick and rest homes and hospitals everywhere. All those that are lying on their bed of affliction, God, we just want to thank you, God, that we are, be, we are able to come into your house this morning to worship and praise your holy name, God, and glorify you. And then, God, I bless you this morning, Lord, to touch out a Sunday school teacher this morning, God, and knowing her fresh, Lord, from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. Lord, down in your storehouse of wisdom and knowledge, when she come forth, use it for your glory. And then, Lord, open up our spirits and ears, God, in the name of Jesus. And then, God, teach us how to pray. Things to pray for, God. Help us, God, to always stay in your presence, God with our arms and hands folded, praying to you, God, every minute, every hour, every second of the day. This prayer I lay before thee this morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Reverend Faith, for that beautiful prayer this morning. <clears throat> now we'll turn it over to our uh, teaching this morning, Trustee Wu. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Our lesson for today is from Romans, the 14th chapter, which is 10 to 23. And the subject is build up one another. Uh, you know, sometimes people judge the other people's faults and other people's flaws. And, and instead of focusing on their own shortcomings, because we all got to but Paul wanted the people not to judge those who have different ideas. He started, he started verse 10 by asking, said, why do you judge your brother or your sister? Said, you, you have no right to criticize or look down on them. So remember, each of us will stand personally before the judgment seat of the God. <clears throat> then Paul reminded the people like he did in his letter to the Philippians, he says, uh, he declared that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess to God. He said, each one of us will give an account of himself before God. He said, so don't judge one another anymore. He said, instead, try to live in such a way that you will never make your brother stumble by letting him see you do something that he thinks is wrong. Now, Paul said, Paul said, I'm perfectly sure on the authority of the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean in itself. But if someone thinks it's unclean, to him it's unclean. And he said, and if your brother is bothered by what to eat, you are not acting in love if you go ahead and eat it. Don't let your feelings ruin someone for whom Christ died. He said, don't do anything that would call criticism against yourself, even though you know what you do is right. Don't let your good be spoken of as evil. For after all, the important thing for us as Christians is not what we eat or drink, but spirit of goodness and peace and joy from the Holy Spirit. Then he said, if you let Christ be Lord in these things, God will be glad, and so will men. In this way, he said, strive and aim for harmony and try to build each other up. He said, don't do the work, don't undo the work of God for a chunk of me. Remember, there's nothing wrong with me, but it is wrong to eat it if it makes another stumble. 
And he said, the right way to do is to quit eating meat or drinking wine or doing anything else that offends your brother or makes him sin. He said, build your own relationship with God, but don't impose it on others. You may know that there is nothing wrong with what you do, even from God's point of view, but keep it to the Don't start your faith in front of others who might be hurt by it. The happy is the man who does not sin by doing what he knows is right. And then he sums it up with saying, but anyone who believes that something he wants to do is wrong can do it. He sins if he does. For he thinks it is wrong for for he thinks it is wrong and so for him it is wrong. Anything that is done apart from what he feels is right is sin. And you know, as we look as we look out here at some of these uh <clears throat> some of the things in, the, in this lesson. Now, Paul uses the image of eating and not eating. He used it as a way of comparing people and their ways. One who eats one is not better than one who does not eat. And uh, if you read the whole chapter there and, and back up uh, at verse 9, which is our lesson start with verse 10, but verse 9 says, Not one of us lives or dies for himself. So if we live, we live for the Lord. Or if we die, we die for the Lord. He said, Therefore, we live to die. We are the Lord. Christ died and lived again that he might be both. He might be Lord both the living and the dead. And, you know, Paul used food and drink. In his illustration, but it could be anything. He but he tells us he said welcome. He tells us to welcome with open arms our fellow believers who don't see things the way we do and don't jump all over them every time they do something that we don't agree with. Sometimes he said even when they have strong opinions but weak faith, they have their own history to deal with. You see, sometimes the stronger people. They can pick on the weak Christians, uh, the weak people, period. And sometimes they, they see that the person is weak and kind of shaky. They're not sure. So they take a, many times people take advantage of that and even have you doing their dirty work. So you know, Paul would tell us, don't y'all be like that. If you're a strong Christian, you've been around a while, you understand some things, and you feel comfortable eating anything you want to, and just because someone else doesn't, don't, don't, don't do that. And he says that, listen to their opinion. Give them a chance to, vo to voice their thoughts and all. And don't just cut them off and jump all over, because they, too, are people of God. And then, too, when you look up there, and you think about, you know, some people grew up all their lives that they had never never eating pork. So we most of us grew up all our lives feeding pork. But the thing about it is because we have we grew up eating pork, we have no right to try to force our opinion on someone who grew up not eating pork. So Paul is saying we are different. We are all gonna be different. And and so what he's saying is that understand each other. Just my boy, that's all. Don't let us jump all over and say, because you think you are right. But you see, uh, uh, some people didn't come up the same way. And everybody's not at the same level in their spiritual life either. And a lot of the people that Paul was talking to, they had been brought up under the law. And the law said, you don't eat this, or you don't do that, or you don't do that. They even ordered about the holidays. They said that they should have just a Jewish holiday, especially to observe the Lord. Someone said, no, you don't need to do all that. So we should have every day is supposed to be a good day. So you can see, it doesn't take much to cause an argument. And from there, it leads on to a division in the house of God. And this is what Paul was trying to tell them. Don't, you know, don't start no little thing like that. It'll build up. 
you know, build up. First thing you do, you start agreeing to disagree. If I don't believe what you believe, as far as if I think what you believe is wrong, and as far as I'm concerned, it's wrong. And to you, it may not be wrong. But Paul is telling us, you know, not to get together, not to work in the harvest. Say, okay, I don't believe what you say is. I don't go. I didn't come up that way. And, and then let it go. Okay, so we don't think a very lot. Paul said, but learn to do the same harmony. Don't just just push the person down. Don't jump all over and say that, well, um, what you did, what you said was wrong, and, and, uh, and all that. Paul said, let us not be like that. He just happened to use drink and wine. And, you know, sometimes when people go places and they will say, maybe they'll go to a, a club or maybe they'll go to a bar and, and get a drink. Well, if you if your brother don't drink, then you ought not to drink. And if you don't, you shouldn't try to force your brother. Sometimes people will try to force their opinion on you. And you know that that's not you. So they'll, they'll try to come on. I ain't going to harm in one little thing. I ain't going to harm. But if you did it, you could be in your own system because you know that's not your lifestyle. So that's what Paul is saying. You know, if a person is forced to decide to go ahead and do something that he or she thinks is wrong, and then they feel bad about it for a long time because that they have stepped out of their body. And, 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 and we said, and Paul said to, in, in some of these verses, he says, you know, all things created by God are true, but they become evil when used by evil persons. They must not be used to create a stomach block for another. See, Paul was saying, even the little old things like food can become a stumbling block. And he tell us that, you know, you've been a, some of you have been around for a while, you, 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 you know the ins and the outs and all that. He says, so when a newcomer comes, just welcome them in. And if they start to talk and they got some opinion that you didn't have or some opinions that you don't think is quite like it ought to be, don't step all over. Don't make them feel bad. You see, uh, sometimes people can be made to feel so bad. And if you're with the group and this group decides they want to go here, and you know you normally don't go to places like that. So therefore, you don't want to go. And they keep on telling you, come on, come on. You know, come on this one time. You might, and you might need more. You just come on and get out sometime. And all this stuff that people love to tell you. But when you think about it, this is not me. You will not be happy at all, no matter what. Because you know in your heart, as far as you could concerned, this is wrong. And you want no part of it. But if you say a lot of people like that, those pushy people, they'll have you doing anything. And this is what Paul was telling us. Now, all you said, you strong Christian, you've been around for a while, you, you build up, you're strong, then you look out for the reason. Don't put stumbling blocks in their way. And, and like I said, it's the problem you assume the stumbling block could be anything. You know places you don't go. You hadn't been going before, so when you when you leave home, that that is one big downfall for a lot of people. When they leave home to go to a job or go to college or whatever, they're in a different world. They're in a different atmosphere. And the group says, we're going here and we're going there. You feel like you have to go because you don't have any friends there. You, you know, you hadn't made a connection. You feel like, well, I may not go. But when the whole time you're miserable, see, when it's the spirit lets you know when you're out of your bounds, when you go accept your bounds, and you know, you know you don't normally go to clubs. You don't normally go to drink all this darkness and loud music and all this stuff, and you know it's not you. You're sitting there with your death because you want out of there. And, and, and uh, you don't know what to do. So you end up staying out through the whole thing. And sometimes trouble comes up. And you might get caught up in this trouble. There's just so many things to consider. 
But the stronger ones, they are over dancing or whatever. They're having a good time. But that's not, that's not you. And you're going to feel bad. You're going to feel condemned. You're going to feel like you've sinned. And, and to you, it is sin. And you will not feel good for a long, long time. So Paul says, don't y'all do that. No, don't be looking down on your brother. Don't, don't do that. So why do y'all like that? You know, apparently, these people, the Romans, had been doing this for a while. And Paul was saying, now look. Why are y'all looking down on your brother or your sister? Why are you despising them? He said, hey, he said, you know one thing? We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And one day we're going we to have to add up. We're going to have to give an account for all the things that we have done. And he said, our life, the whole life, will be presented, will be laid out right there. And so why not have some good things and, rather than the bad ones? Because sooner or later, you don't have to give an account for what we do. And sometimes, you know, while we're doing them, we, we don't think about the consequences. And maybe sometimes we're not even aware how we're treating our brothers and sisters. We ought to be sensitive to their feelings. We think about... At one time, most of us have been in a situation like this. Growing up, going to school, to be with the group, sometimes you had to compromise your principles and, 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 and everything. You didn't want to, but you wanted, you wanted friends, you wanted to have somebody to be, a, to be your pal. So you went along with it. But that, that does not help the person. It keeps them weak and keeps them dependent on you. And Paul said, anybody put a stomach block in a way, that is, that is sin. God does not want us to put stomach block in our, in, in other believers we are in anybody ways for that matter. And you know, people have a way of often trying to force their beliefs on them. So you know, like you said, like I said to her, somebody else said, well try it, you might like it. But you know you do. You weren't drinking strong drinks before. But you got to, you caught up into the situation. And instead of a mature person helping you out, they're pushing you on. And God does not like that because if it's wrong to the person, it, it is wrong to him regardless because that's not his lifestyle. That's not what he was brought up to do. And they had rules. And regulation, especially in the Jewish community, was up. And, and none of this is what, this is not it. And, and he's saying, you know, Paul is saying, now when you, when you put stumbling blocks in, in, in other believers' way or in anybody's way, so that matter, when you put stumbling blocks in a way, you know, you're hindering them. You have to answer to God for that. And if someone says, you know, I don't eat that, uh, okay, there's something else. God got something else on his table. So, uh, uh, you know, there, sh there should be something up there that everybody can eat. Because that's the way God is, he looks out. But because a person tells you he doesn't eat pork, that's, that's all right. That, that, that is what he grew up in. So, you know, why should we do anything different? I mean, who are we to criticize God so we all are going to bow? Every knee bow, every tongue confess. So why do we need to, why do we need to criticize these people? Because the thing about it is, all of us belong to God. God made us, God knew we got different ideas, we got different tastes and all that. So he's the stronger ones, he looked for the especially talking about the believers now, the believers are the strong believers. He look for you to look after the weaker ones instead of putting stumbling blocks in their way because they don't worship the way you do. They don't keep the same holidays you do. That They don't worship, they don't do things like that. So instead of 
uh, giving them free range and saying, well, you know, we're different. We, we, we grew up different. We celebrate things different. And uh, for your beliefs and my beliefs will be a little different. That's what we can come together and, and get on one accord. That still doesn't mean you have to change your idea or nothing. But to get on one accord so you're not arguing about who's right and who's wrong. So this is what Paul was telling us. Yeah, y'all need to get together so you have some harmony. And, and Paul told him, said, now, you know, the kingdom of God is not about food and drink. Said, it's about what God does with our life as he sets it right, puts it together, and completes it with joy. Paul speaks of a lifestyle that creates peace and harmony. And this is what we want, and this is what we need in our church. We, the church, should be not be a uh, stopping block. We should be welcome everyone with open arms. And sometimes when you have a situation going on, especially meeting, everybody's not going to agree. We know that. Uh, we not agree, but we're not going to be fussing and, and, and carrying on. Because someone said, I know I'm right. Maybe you are right. But what Paul is saying, come to some kind of agreement. But when you leave there, you are not mad with each other, ready to fight and all that stuff. Just because your idea didn't pass. It may pass the next time. The idea that they took in place of your idea this time, it may not work. Down the road, they may see that should have changed. So what I'm saying is that you go and you do what the Lord has you do. First of all, you don't argue with anybody. I mean, you don't get all blown out and argue and carry on and disrespect everybody. And if there's a new convert in there, that person is looking at it and wondering, is this the way church is? Is this the way it's supposed to be? You know? So what we do is just, <clears throat> first of all, we talk with God. We stay with God. If we plan on having this walk, we're going to walk the walk of faith, then some things have got to change in our life. And if the Christian is determined to walk in the ways of the Lord, then he got to be concerned that it is a walk of encouragement and building up. Being concerned with the feelings and the needs of others. See, so many times people only think about themselves. And all of this is a growing process. If you want to be one of the followers of God, it's a long process. If you don't plan on doing right, it doesn't matter what you do anyway. So what Paul is saying now, you know, all of this stuff going to come, come to the end. We all want to be at the judgment seat of Christ. We all want to be all down, might be side by side, down and down. I don't care. And he says, all of us going to do it. So if you're going to be judged, and when that time comes to be judged, you're not going to be judged by humans anymore where you where you have all this going on. Uh-uh, no, no. See, we're all God's servants, and we're always up to him. And if there's correction to be made, let God do it. He don't, he, don't have, he don't need our help to correct different ones. But he do need us to love a person and let a person know that we are, that we are there to support them, to build them up. To edify them. And, you know, some people may say, well, you know, I, I, was, I was really weak, and I didn't know, and I talked to someone, and they helped me out a lot. Maybe you don't know a whole lot to tell them biblically, but you can you can be patient with them, you can listen to them, and, and anything that you can help them do to build them up. Because if one build one up, another build another up, next thing you know, we got a community of good people, and that community started building other people. And that's the way it goes, like a chain reaction. And when we stand before God, you see, we're not going to be judged by these same women. We might judge each other here on earth, but we're not going to be judged like that. We're going to be judged by the Almighty God. And there's nothing we can say, I didn't do it, or I, I was going to do what I'm just saying. You'll be judged by someone who knows it all. Here we're judged by each other. We judge what we don't know. We, we think, we suspect, 
and we judge it that way. But God knows the heart, and he can judge from there. And if we're not careful, <clears throat> we'll slip into this habit of thinking, well, I'm all right, but they're not all right. I got it made, but they ain't got it made. No, no. And we, we all are going to stand before the judgment of Peter Christ. And we need to make sure that we have a good seed on this side. We look back for each other. We build each other up. Instead of tearing them down, you know, just, just build them up. And, you know, uh, open, as you said, welcome them to the home. Let them come on and, and come into the house of the Lord and, and let us let us all worship. We all belong to God. And just walk the ones that the strong ones. Look out for the weaker ones. It's kind of like the parents are looking out for the children. They know the children are weaker. And in this world, the parents don't live to what the children are now experiencing. So he, the parents looked out for the children. That's kind of like all oh, one of them. Look out for each other. Uh, no way to get them the phone show. Make sure there's harmony. Make sure there's harmony. And, and you know, whatever you do, he says, wait for peace. Wait for peace. And there's nothing like this blessed peace. When you are at peace, nothing can bother you. And, and, and Paul wants us to, to help the, the ones that are weak. Help them out. Build them up. Don't tell them down. Don't tell them down and saying that because maybe they don't know. But so he's saying, Paul is saying, build them up. Help them up. And, and these are the things that we as believers need to, need to be concerned with. The strong believers need to be concerned with the weaker ones. And we need to be careful how we walk with them. We need to be careful what we say in front of them because they're looking at us. And if we do something that they think is wrong, you know, here they are confused. Now, which way is this? This person I thought was a strong person. And now look at them, what they are, the stuff coming out of their mouth, the action they have, and all that kind of stuff. You have to be careful because someone is always watching, even when you don't know it. And every believer should have standards and principles, but they should, <clears throat> but they should see that they are not used, that, that they are used to help others and not hinder others. If you think you have a line, maybe you have, but the thing about it, you ain't never got enough that you can get down on somebody else. God wants us to. Look at how a sister and brother and sister and brother look out for them, not look down on them. But that is what, that is our job here on this side. We are missionaries, and, and we have a mission for you. He wants us to look out for each other. So what he, he wants us to do to the point that, you know, we are there for our brothers and our sisters. And, and in closing, it says, before you talk, listen. Before you react, think. Before you criticize, wait. Before you pray, forgive. Before you quit, try again. Are there any comments? I really enjoyed the Sunday school lesson this morning. Thank you. Playing very good. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments? Any other comments? I especially like that last part you just said. Before you do anything, thank oh. all of you. Y'all, I like all of that. Okay. So that that's for real. That's what everybody needs to do. Think before you speak and wait before you do something. Uh -huh. Don't just do something because somebody say something. Wait and, and think about what you should do. Yes. Are there any other comments? And you know, that's 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 how you love people and stuff. When you that's uh 
don't criticize nobody. Work with them. Let, let, just like people work with me. I, I don't mind. Nobody will hear from me if I do something on the side that you feel like it's wrong, if I say something wrong. I ain't going to get mad, but I, if you help me, I, I still get stronger. That's how everybody should be. But everybody aren't that way sometimes. I know. I I feel that, you know, just like with the Sunday school lesson, I welcome anybody criticism. If they think of a way that they think I can do better, if they tell me, I'll try. I, I will do what needs to be done. Uh, if someone has got, you know, if they give me a compliment, I thank them for that because that strengthened me and let me know that I'm reaching someone and somebody saying, uh, go ahead, we're supporting you especially as long as you're doing the right thing. So uh, I'm going to, I know that in this life you're going to have criticism and you're going to have some, some praise. And mm-hmm. thank God for both of them. Because when mm-hmm. you got the criticism, I think about now what else could I have done to do a better job next Sunday than I did this Sunday. Right, because so, constructive criticism can't help you grow. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. And if someone gives me to pray, say I enjoy the lesson, and that strengthen me, I'm glad I said, okay, now next time I'll try to do it even better. But I know that, you know, these Sundays roll around real quick. So, you, you know, I have to study all week. <laughs> but the thing about it is somebody is getting something from it, so it's real worth it. If we don't try to put a stumbling block in nobody's way, I don't, because I feel if I, somebody, if I put a stumbling block in somebody's way, somebody's going to put a stumbling block in my way. So we don't right. And then yeah. we all be falling down. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Are there any other comments? Yeah, no, I just like to I just like to say this again that I had just read that uh Sister Johnson said she enjoyed it. it says before you talk, listen. Before you react, think. Before you criticize, wait. Before you pray, forgive. And before you quit, try again. If there aren't any other comments, this concludes our Sunday School lesson for today. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for the brief Sunday School lesson this morning. We are here from someone, from our, before we go to our secretary this morning, we are here from someone that what we got out of the lesson this morning. <clears throat>